Good afternoon and welcome to Volvo Constructions Customer Centre. We're delighted to have you here today to talk about our tips and tricks for using loaders. My name is Ian Harvey and I'm with our loader expert Chris Connolly. Um, on our last programme we talked a little bit about the geometry of the wheel loader, the bucket, the setup, Chris, and uh, lots of people found that interesting. So tell me today, are we going to get practical? What are we going to do? Absolutely. First of all, it's good to be back again. Um, yes, we're going to get practical. Now that we've shown the setup and all the various settings to, to get on the machine prior to operation, now we're going to operate these machines. Uh, we're going to have Tyler with us. He's going to show us some good, bad stuff. We're going to start with proper bucket loading, approaching the pile. Then we're going to carry on to truck loading. We'll, take, we'll talk about our parallel, parallel lift with our torque parallel linkage. Attachments, not just the attachment bracket this time, but powered attachments. How do we do the hose connections, um, tips and tricks for that. And then lastly, we'll show you some new stuff, new technology. Okay, so we're going to talk about loading first. Now, when, I, when I've seen lots of operators over the years I've been around this business, I see an operator in a loader attack a pile of 100 tonnes of, of chippings, gravel, whatever it is, and they've got a four-yard bucket on it and they're only ever going to get four yards of material in right, there. Right. Not 100 tons, but they try and move it. And I see things going on where they're, they're operating it and they're working the machine incredibly hard. How do they do that and why do they do it? It frustrates me, Chris. First of all, you and I both know in the construction industry, there, there's always, you're always pressed for time. Yep. Time, timing's of the essence. So I think some of that mindset comes in when they get in the machine, they got to go as fast as they can. And, you know, they got to get a job done. So. Right. Uh, the, the, what I want to show you now is we're going we're to identify some of those those things, and then next we'll, we'll show you the, the smooth and, and and efficient way to do it, basically. So you're going to get Tyler to show us how not to do it. Yep, we'll have Tyler do it right okay. now. So what machine have we got here, Chris? So we have our L90H 2.0 machine. And where does that fit in the range of Volvo loaders? It's it's our it's a medium sized loader, um, so it's a, it's about a we'd call it like a 3.7 3.5 yard class. Um, yep. In this instance, we're running a four yard bucket on it, set up uh, for no, rehandling. Whoa, I've seen this. Yeah, so a lot of times do. they'll they'll run in there and they'll they'll exercise that bucket to try to dig deeper and penetrate the pile with 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 reprocessed material. You really don't have to do that. Um, you saw him spin, he, he spun a little bit there. He, he really attacked the pile too, didn't right. he? I've he, seen that be he done. Went, he went in there fast. So again, that comes with that mindset of, I gotta get this done fast, I gotta get, I gotta get moving. But I also was listening and the, the engine was revving and working and working right, well, hard and the wheels were spinning. Yep, yep. We, we really don't need to use that much power to get in there and we're gonna have Tyler do it the right way this time and you'll see how much smoother, how much more efficient and how much more productive he can be with you know, using those slower movements, more controlled, and, and using the power the way, it's, way, the way it's really meant to be delivered into that pile. And does that make a difference? I heard him revving the thing. Will that make a difference on fuel? Absolutely. I mean, think about the two biggest expenses for an owner operator, or even, right. even the owner of that machine are gonna be tires and fuel. Right. Spinning tires, over revving the engine. Those two expenses just climbing, 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 right. climbing. And that's a bad operation, really. Yep, so now Tyler's gonna take, he's gonna dump the, the material um, and then we'll see him approach the truck. Okay, a lot smoother. Very quiet, the machine, Chris. Yeah. It's incredibly quiet. Uh, again, with Volvo, we have high torque at low RPM, so he, he really doesn't have to get up in that high RPM range right. to get the bulk of the machine's power. See him going in. So what's stopping that from spinning now? So Volvo has standard on all wheel loaders. We have rim pull control now on all of them. So he's able to basically modulate the power going to the wheels right. to match his underfoot conditions. So he can, he can stop the machine from spinning, maintain traction, and also reduce tire wear. Perfect, perfect. So we'll watch Tyler approach the truck. Yeah. <laughs> What was that all about? A little rough, huh? Yeah, so what's, what did he do wrong? So the, for me, when, when you're, the first load going into the truck is really kind of crucial. You want to make sure you're centered 
and we want to have a, a slow, steady dump in there. Right. I mean, we don't. I mean, it can it can be you know a decent speed, but we don't want to have that load shifting to the far side oh. of the truck, or we want it in the center so the truck's not unbalanced going down the road. He's nice and tight as well here. I see. Absolutely. The, the other key to loader loading truck efficiency is going to be keeping that Y cycle tight. We want to make sure we're not going further than we have to, because then again, taking more time to load the truck, burning more fuel. Right. That's a nice steady dump into the so truck. So right in the center, even. No, you didn't see any kind of violent movement on the no. truck itself. The truck driver's happy. He's smiling. Now this 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 machine, this truck, they seem to be somewhat well matched and balanced. Tell me a little bit about the L90. So the L90 we see here, we have fitted with uh, our extra logging counterweight, okay, and our four-yard bucket. So it's really purposed for this type of like, handling reprocess material. Right. You can see it's very stable as well. You didn't see the machine rocking or yeah. it wasn't tippy approaching the truck. So it's really set up to to do this. When you have a machine that is slightly smaller than, than, the, than the bed of the truck, like a, if you don't have a production machine, like a big quarry machine, be you always want to stagger, also stagger yep. your loads front to back on the truck. Right. This shot here gives me a great view of, you talked about parallel linkage on the last episode, and yep. you talked about the different linkages. Yep. What can you show me and tell me about that, Chris? All right, we'll have Tyler back up a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to get my trusty water bottle here, and we're going to show I'm going to highlight the parallel lift. So if, if everyone remembers the last, uh, the first, the first stake or the first uh, Facebook Live yep. event, yeah. we showed, we, we showcased our linkage. We did, we did. Our torque parallel linkage. One of the, the key benefits to torque parallel linkage is parallel lift. Correct. And what parallel lift is going to do for us, it's going to stay basically when that bucket is set flat on the ground. Yep it's going to end up flat in the air. Full height? Full height. OK. And there's no button or switch inside the cab that the, the, the operator has to hit to change for between forks or bucket, anything. It's Whenever it's flat, it ends flat. So we'll put our water bottle on here. Right. We're going to have Tyler lift. And all he's doing now is pulling he's, the lift lever he's back. He's not actuating the tilt at all. He's simply pulling back all the way on the lift lever. Right. So he doesn't have to compensate for that at all. And then at the end of our stroke, at the top, we have what we call end stroke dampening, so that right. there's not a violent stop at the end. Oh, yeah, that makes a difference. I hear that banging all the time. Or, you know, then you have to run the risk of losing material. Right. Parallel lift is also really, really important for fork handling when you have pallets, if you have to do any kind of stacking pallets at height. Okay. That way it's easy to keep them flat and get your forks going in and picking up pallets. It just makes it a lot easier. And I presume if you've got, like, a, a rehandling arm or something on there. Yep. At different heights, that makes a difference Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and that coupled with our electric over hydraulic controls gives you really, really great controllability over over whatever you have on the front of the machine. Great, great. Now, uh, you said you were going to talk about attachments. I did. I'm looking over here at a, a, a Holmes. It looks like a broom. Yeah, let's go take a walk. Let's take a walk right. over there and check it out. Okay. Thanks, Tyler. So it's a home, is it just a broom? This is a, it's a pickup room. We have a gutter brush on it uh -huh. and also a water reservoir to keep the dust down. Right. Biggest problem with these things, as you know, hooking the things up. Hooking them up. <laughs> hooking them up. Not, and, and I'm not talking about the attachment bracket either. No, I'm no, talking no, no. about the hydraulic yeah. fittings. So, so what are your tips and tricks for that? My, my main tip for, for Volvo machines on that's going to be, we do have a way to relieve the pressure on, right. on the machine. So after the machine's run, we're going to turn the key off, turn it back onto the run position, not start it, and then we're going to run the third function lever, or the lever, or the rocker switch, whatever you have in the machine, and then that's going to take the pressure off here. Right. Some other things I would point out, we want to make sure, again, you know, if it's the first time you're ever putting this type of attachment on, you've, yep. it's new or something like that, you want to make sure you have the hoses are long enough. Uh -huh. um, and we also want to make sure we route the hoses correctly. We don't want to have the hoses in a situation where they're able to be pinched. Yep. Um, and in addition to that, it's also good to be aware, a lot of these, all these new fittings now, they have a locking device here. So after you make the connection, you can set this locking device and then they don't back off. Also, for storing them, 
If you do have caps like this, and Appreciate if you don't, I advise you get them. Use these after you take it off. Same on the machine side. I do see a lot of people, they don't tend to use these all the so time. And you can see- a cap the, there, isn't there? Yep, Just yep. The back of it. and you can see dirt. It's really easy to get dirt. Sure. The oil's gonna attract dirt and dust, right? Yep. So that's a real easy way to get contaminants introduced into your hydraulic system. Also, if you do switch power attachments regularly, it's really good to keep an eye on your hydraulic fluid. Of course. Um, make sure you're checking hydraulic fluid routinely. So there's no more getting a little piece of a rag and tapping it with a hammer? What? <laughs> I don't know about, I, I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> that so, makes no, it simple. No, well, I, I, I'm, I, can't, I can't say that it's never been done before because you know, if you're in that situation, yep. yeah, but you, know, you, can do, you can do damage to these fittings in, internally if you're taking that, that hammer or anything like that. Nah, I'm not gonna do you it. You know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. All right, you said you've got some new technology. Tell me about new technology. What if I was to tell you that there is a way you could hook up to an attachment like this yeah. and not have to put your hands on any hydraulic hoses? Well, you're going to have to show me because I don't believe that. Well, let's take a walk. Let's take another walk, actually. Okay, yeah, this looks different. Huh? Yeah. This is a standard carriage. Yeah, this, this is, this is, it's set up ISO, yep. very similar to one of our older style couplers. This is called the oil quick. Right. And what this does is all of your third function, even fourth function if you want, and even ele electrical as well if you wanted to, can be run through this coupler. And then when you open your locks on the attachment bracket, it makes the connection automatically. See him open it then. So when it opens, these doors open, they expose your valves here for third and fourth function if you wanted to add electrical right. again, like I said, you could. And these valves are going to pair with the valves that are added to the attachment. So these, these yes. three match up with those three on yep. there? Yep. Okay, cool. And, and then, then all the hydraulics are there ready for it. And if you notice too, there's really good indicators on the backside. These red indicators show Tyler that the, the, the attachment's locked. Yep. And then also we have protection here you know, when there is no th powered attachment on there, say we wanted to just put right. a bucket on here, that protection that keeps the dirt and dust out. For, so it's basically all purpose. We can use a regular non-powered attachment or a powered attachment with it. Let me, come on, it's a four in one bucket. He can't attach that well, and work it. Let's see, let's see what he does. Let's have a look. Let's get out of the way. I don't believe this. So there is protection built in on the attachment side as well as the coupler side to protect those components. As soon as he locks the attachment bracket, he'll instantly have that uh, third function. You see Tyler will check the attachment, make sure it's on. And then instantaneously he now has third function. That's amazing. Yep. That's got to save life. about that in the winter time, if you had a snow blade or, you know, you don't have to get out in the snow sure. and deal with the frozen hoses, stuff like that. That's incredible. Thank you, Tyler. Hey, we've just had one text. Somebody's asked, can you reiterate the warranty we have on something like an L90 loader? We talked about it on the last uh, yep. Facebook Live. So the, 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 one of the main warranties we have on the loader, other than our, our normal warranty, is the, the really important one to know is the lifetime frame and structure warranty. So li lifetime warranty on the boom, front frame, rear frame, and the articulation joint. So that's the arms? You said arms. boom, you mean the arms. Yep, and then the front frame structure, right. rear frame structure, and the articulation. Lifetime warranty. Lifetime okay, warranty. That, that answers that question. We're about out of time, folks, and we really do appreciate you joining us today. Uh, if you've got any questions, any comments, or is there something from the Volvo family that you'd like to see on our next Facebook Live, especially around loaders with Chris, we can, uh, we can add that. So send the information in. Texas emails, we are more than willing to help and in times like this, get the information to you. On behalf of Volvo and Construction, I'd like to thank you for joining it. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Tyler, for being with us. Thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye now.